Howdy everyone, Poultry here with an Age of Magic video and today I wanted to cover marks. Before we start though, I just wanted to let everyone know that as much as I would like to say that this is a guide, it is more of a run through. Marks can be very in depth and to cover every little corner of the subject would take far too long. Hopefully I can teach you all the basics though and from there help you learn strategies and other ways you can implement marks into your teams. Marks are split into two categories these being faction marks and class marks. Each faction carries their own mark as you can see on the screen with the kobolds and arakan, and then each class also carries their own mark. Like the rogues, casters, healers, tanks, range and melee. Each one of these marks can trigger their effect and I will show you how some of these work in this video. Before we do that though, I wanted to give a brief description on what each class mark does. This information has been found through personal research and I'm sorry if I confuse anyone and if I do please don't hesitate to leave a question in the comments and I'll try my hardest to clarify your query. It is also important to note that the effects I am about to mention may not always apply or be what happens in battle. There are some characters in the game that can break these marks, however they trigger a different effect to the generic bonus I'm about to mention. This happens mostly in the rogue class so I'm going to start with them first. For rogues, the most consistent effect that is triggered when this mark is broken is that the character with the mark is forced to skip their next turn. Like I said though, this is the most prominent effect. For example, this is not the case for Succubus. If she triggers the rogue class mark, she will follow through with a second basic attack. Now this is the perfect example of why this is such a difficult topic to cover because even though I can tell you the generic effect of the mark, it can completely change when being used by a character that contains their own unique way in which they trigger that mark. In the future, I do hope to make guides on specific factions that will give me a chance to explain what each character does in greater detail, but I'll talk more about that towards the end of the video. Now on to casters. This mark is able to grant your characters a 100% chance of critically striking your opponent when triggered. Now this works with AoE abilities as well. If you have applied the caster mark on all your enemies, then an AoE ability like Rock's Fireball will deal a critical strike to all enemies it hits. Now onto the healer class mark. Now through my research I was only able to find that this ability was able to be triggered through the attack of a healer, and if in the skill description it stated that the ability could in fact trigger the healer class mark, then that ability would then strike a second time. Again, this is the most common effect I could find through breaking this class mark. I know that I keep repeating myself, but I really want to get that point across that this is, these are just the generic effects that take place. Next we have the tank class mark. This mark, when triggered, will allow the character to heal for 10% of their maximum health. Uh, that's nice and simple. Then we have the range class mark. This prevents the enemy from dodging the next attack made against them from an ability that can trigger the, this mark. Now it is very important to mention that at the time of making this video and being in patch 1.6, this mark does not work as intended. Dodging is broken at the moment and champions can dodge anything. This will be rectified in the next patch where dodging will be removed unless such a character has a passive dodge ability or is granted dodge through the use of an ability. Lastly we have the melee class mark. This mark when triggered will lower the enemy's defences by 20%. Again, it's nice and simple. So that covers the general effects for class marks. I will not cover faction marks, as unlike class marks, faction marks work differently for every character that can trigger their race's mark. It's not like class marks where there is a generic effect and therefore would take far too long to cover. Like mentioned before, eventually I do hope to release faction videos in which I will be able to go into great depth about faction marks. So now I want to show you how this works in battle. For the example, I'm going to use a demon team, and I know I wasn't going to talk about faction marks, but in this video, I'm given the opportunity to trigger the faction mark, and I'll show you what it does. So these are the demons I've chosen to use. Now, I'm going to do this in a TOH scenario, so the characters are kind of my level. I can apply the marks and show you how they work. I'm going to start with Abyss Hound, who can apply a mark instantly. The uh, icon is above the move I want to use, so he's going to use his triple attack, which applies the range class mark, which then can be triggered by Infernus. So by clicking on Infernus's moves, I can see what will happen when I trigger the mark on Silver Moon. So in this case, the attack is impossible to dodge. So we're going to use the AoE ability. And it removed the mark from her because it was triggered. So the mark is removed and the attack hit her. 
Unfortunately, at this current time, the best way to find out what marks do is in the battle scenario. You're able to click on the moves and see what the marks do. So I'm going to silence Silver Moon here because I don't want her to heal. And I'm going to use Eraser to apply the Demon Mark to all enemies. And as you can see in the description, it shows you who can resolve the mark as well or trigger the mark. So I'm going to apply the Demon Mark to everyone. Now, as you can see, Riser is underground and the move did not hit him. Therefore, he hasn't got the mark on him. So now I'm going to use Abyss Hound who can trigger the demon mark and by doing so will be able to attack with a second basic attack after his ability. So there you go, I killed him because he was able to trigger the mark and follow up with a basic attack along with the ability he used. Now it's important to take note that the demon mark will stay on these characters unless another move is used that will replace the mark or a move is used that will trigger the mark. So I'll be able to show you how that works later on, or well, quite soon actually, as you will see Angram has the demon mark on him at the moment. And when we get up to my eraser, I have an ability, an ability that applies the rogue mark. So I've applied the rogue mark, which has taken over the um, demon faction mark. Now from this point on, I am aiming to use my succubus to trigger the rogue class mark now. So here she is. Now when I'm triggering this mark, one allied rogue will perform an additional attack on a random enemy. Wanna, yep, yeah, so the same build, uh, move, so I attack. And then I follow up with a basic attack. So since she's the only rogue on the team, she picked herself and she followed with a basic attack. So you're getting two attacks off for free. Well, an attack off for free. And the same here, she follows through with another attack. And that's how marks are used in battle. So with the mark system at the moment, you can use a plethora of teams to trigger and activate marks. Um, each character can trigger or apply a mark, and I'm going to show you how to look at what the characters can do. You simply go into your Heroes tab and click on a character, and then click on a skill, and scroll down, and it will show you what the mark does. Now, a lot of these marks are very vague in what they do. As you can see here, on the next character I click, Arakan Axoa, the mark. You see, the faction mark is quite descriptive. It tells you what you, it does. But clicking on his next ability triggers range damage class mark. Now I can understand as a new player, you may not know what that means. And as I described before in the class marks, that breaks the, the um, generic effect. Unless it mentions it does something else, it will always break or trigger the generic effect. Now I just wanted to address to new players as well that certain characters can't use marks or break marks until they reach a certain level, certain equipment level, certain skin skill level. It all, de it all depends on what the ability says. You can find that information when you click on a skill and scroll down to the bottom. It will have a locked symbol that will tell you what requirements you need to reach before you can use the marks for that ability. I really do want to do faction videos for the different factions in the game and I have requested another account linked that isn't able to compete in arena or do anything else apart from battle the campaign or TOH where I can have all characters the same level, same item level, same everything so I can show people in depth what each faction does but until I hear more about that I don't want to promise anything. Um, Again, I hope this video has been helpful in some way. If you do have any questions, please feel free to leave a, leave a comment um, below and I will try and help you in whatever way I can. I also just wanted to mention, oh, well, not mention, but thank everyone so far for the support they've shown me. I do hope to bring more videos out that help the public in um, the way they play Age of Magic. And um, without you guys, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you very much for the support. And I really do hope that this video has helped you all out in some way. Um, until next time, thank you for watching and take care everyone.